So today we're still dealing with the chapter three, so uniform boundedness principle and the closed graph theorem. So last time we stated and proved the bare category theorem, which uh, writes like that. And today we are following up with um, a corollary. So just just uh, a few reminder about the the bare category theorem. So if you are if X is a complete metric space and Fn is a sequence of closed sub subsets in X, if you assume that for each closed subset its interior is empty, then when you look at the uh, union, a union indexed by n, then its interior is also empty. So to illustrate that, you can, for example, think about points in R2 or, or lines in R2. If you, if you take a union of lines in R2 with the usual topology in there, you, the usual metric, then its interior is empty. There's no interior point uh, of a union of lines indexed by n in R2. So with this theorem in mind, we are now um, dealing with the this corollary that will be helpful for the for the following of the, the lecture. So now if uh, X this time is a non-empty complete metric space. And you have a, again, a sequence of uh, closed subs subspace, sub subsets. And this time you assume that uh, when you, you take the union uh, indexed by N of Fn, it's X. Then uh, you have no choice. There's exist a N node in N such that the interior of N F n node is is non empty. It it has at least one one point. So we're going to prove uh, this this now. So the proof is quite uh, is quite in fact um, is just an application of the the Baer theorem. So, and we, we, we are reasoning by contradiction. So if you assume that, that the conclusion is not true, this means that for each N, the interior is empty. So let's uh, assume that for every N in N, the interior is empty. Okay, what we are doing now? So, we can just apply the bare theorem. If, if for each n, the interior of n is empty, then you take the union of all over the n, it's also empty. So now from bare theorem, we have that the interior of the union is an empty set. But that's not possible, why? Does somebody can say why that's not possible? So because, because, by assumption, we know that the union of the Fn's is X. But by definition of a topology, the wall space is always an open set. And for an open set, the, the interior of an open set is the, is the set, set itself. So we have, we conclude that the union of so you have that the interior of so again then you come back 
this gives you that X is the empty set. We got that. So, so X equals the it's interior because X is open. So union of N of Fn equals union N of Fn interior. And so this gives you that X equals empty set. But this contradicts our assumption, which is X is non-empty. And that's it. So our proof uh, is our proof is complete. Okay. Any questions? So we are moving now with the uniform boundedness principle. Uh, this is an important theorem, okay? So it's also called Banach-Stenhaus theorem. Okay, so this is the theorem. So let's discuss a little bit about it. So we, we work here with two Banach spaces, E and F. And we assume that you have a family Ti. So here, for example, I is not indexed by N. That's the difference. So you have a family of bounded linear operators from E to into F. Okay, continuous and bounded is actually the same. So now, uh, your assumption is that for each X in E, when you, the, the TI of X is uniformly bounded, meaning that you take the supremum and it's finite, all right? So for fixed X, and then, so the X disappears in the conclusion. That's the main thing, that's the thing. Uh, you get that the, this is the, this is, this is the norm, this is the operator norm, right? This is here, this is the operator norm. And here, here is the norm on the F, on the space F, while here, is the operator norm, okay? All right, so, so that's the point. You fix an X, you have, a, you have an assumption with for fixed X and you get a conclusion which is uniform in X. So that's a nice result. Um, So here we go. I just uh, rewritten the, the theorem. So the proof. All right, so the proof will rely the proof will rely on uh, this corollary that we've just uh, proved, okay? And so in order to, to apply this corollary, I will define some closed subsets. So we define Fn by So Fn will be um, a space in X and it's, oh yeah, so just I call it E, but uh, okay. So X, X in E such that 
for all i in i, the norm of t i x is less than, so there's no n, then n now appears here. That's my fn. fn is a closed uh, set because if you take a sequence which is in fn, fn a sequence xp um, and which converges to some x, then uh, since the inequality here is, um, is large, uh, you will get that the limit is also in Fn. So Fn is a closed set. Fn is a closed subset of, uh, you know, I'm trying to apply uh, not the bare theorem, we're going to apply the corollary that we just uh, we just proved. So, so the, the assumption in the corollary is that the union is X. Uh, is that true? Well, so pick up now. Is that true? So pick up, pick up any x in in. So again, sorry. Uh, our space is called E, which is uh, quite unfortunate. But okay. So let x be any point on E. Okay, by by assumption, by assumption, so I claim that for n large enough, x x will be in f n. So why? Because by assumption, by assumption, we know that uh, it exists some constant c x such that for all i in i, t i x is less, so this is the norm in f, is less than c x. Okay, so, uh, it's, so if n is greater than c x, so it follows that, For n, for an n that is larger than cx, you have that x belongs to fn. So, uh, what does it mean? It means that you pick up any x in your in your space E. There is this, there exists some fn such that x belongs to fn. So this means that in fact, uh, this is true. So therefore, we have that E equals Okay, so what can I conclude from the co corollary? I'm waiting for you right now. So what does the corollary say now? Okay, now from the corollary, we know that There is ex exists n node such that the interior of n node 
is non empty. Okay. So if the interior is non empty, I can always find a wall. So now let let x and uh, on R such that the ball of center X and radius R is included in FN node. I, I could also put, uh, take the interior, but it's not necessary. But I want here, I want the closed ball. I can always do that. Uh, for example, by taking R divided by two or something like that. But so where BC is a closed ball. Okay. So thanks to the corollary I deduce that there exists some closed ball centered at a point X and or radius R, which is included in FN node. So by definition, of F a node, it follows that it follows that for all, let's say Z, in B of C of R, the norm, the you have that T E Z is less than N node. Okay, now. Or, or for all y in E such that, so it follows that, such that the norm of y is one. So now I will just say that this is true for all uh, the, um, the sphere here. So you have that for all i in i, ti of x plus r y is less than n. So here, x plus r y are those points who are on the sphere of center X and radius R. Okay. So next, uh, let's uh, do this trick. So what I want is I would like to obtain TE, TI of Y uh, to get the operator norm. And to do that, I just, I just use this trick. I will say that 
I will use that. The, we have this inequality. So T I R Y minus minus ti of x is less than ti ry minus minus ti of x. Uh, this is a classical inequality. Let's write it here. You have that norm of a minus norm of b is less than norm of a minus b. Okay, uh, just think about that. This is a classical inequality. So, but this is nothing but ti of, because ti is linear, you get x plus ry, and this is less than a node. All right, so, what do I get here? Finally, I get here that in particular, I get that T I R Y is less than N node plus T I of X. So uh, let us rewrite this last inequality that we obtain. So we obtain that ti of ry is less than n node plus ti of x. So this is equivalent to ti of y is less than one divided by r and n node plus ti of x. All right, so now if I, I take, so this implies that for all i in i, ti of, and for all y such that norm do y equals one, ti of y is less than one divided by r and node plus cx. And finally, we get that. So this is, this is I can take the, 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 the supremum over the y's and the supremum over the i's and I get the sub over the i's of the operator norm of ti is less than n node plus cx. So we got it. So the next section deals with the open mapping theorem and the closed graph theorem. So first, open mapping theorem. What are the, what are the assumptions? E and F are two Banach spaces and T is a bounded linear operator from E on to F. So on to F means surjective it means that the range of t is equal to f. So under such assumptions, there exists a constant c such that the image of the unit ball of 
E. Contains a ball centered at zero and of radius C. So, of course, uh, the ball is in the, the space F. Okay. So it writes BF zero C included in the image by T of BE, the unit ball of E. So we are going to prove to prove the, uh, this theorem. All right, so we are going to prove the open mapping theorem. So the proof, in fact, splits in two parts. First, uh, we are going to prove that we are go going to prove the, the this theorem, but we've instead of uh, so this will be the bare theorem if we can prove that, but in fact we are first going to prove it for the closure of the ball, and then. We'll see how to, in fact, prove that it's it's actually in there. Okay, so let's start with the one. Okay, first. So since T is onto, we can prove that F equals So why? Why can we prove that? So why why is that true? Because uh, for any y in f, you can always write you can always write it as y equals t of x because. Because T is on to and two means surjective. Okay, but now from the linearity of T, I can write it as, for example, I will divide it by two times norm of X. And here I put two times norm of X. And now this belongs to, this is, because this is one divided by two. So uh, this belongs to the open ball. And so for, for N, greater than two norm of X, you have that Y belongs to N T is equal one. So since my Y was, uh, uh, was a new Y, you get that in fact, F equals the union of N in N of N. Right. So now 
uh, we have that F equals the union of that. Okay, so if this is true, I can take the closure. I can take the closure and again, I apply my corollary of the bear, Bear's theorem. So there exists a node such that such that n t e zero one is not the empty set. And this is a node. So so let's take an open ball who is in there. I can do that because uh, the interior of a set is open is an open set. So let's let's y and C positive such that the ball is included in there. Can't do that. So this means what? Uh, this means that to say that the ball centered in Y and with radius C is included in uh, this thing means that, so there's a closure. So by a closure, I, I will take a limit. So let's let Z such that norm of z is less than c then i can get that a sequence such that y plus z equals the limits as let k goes to infinity of n node t of xk with norm of xk less than one so that's the meaning of this. Okay, so we get what we get that. We get that one divided by n node of y plus c equals limit and k goes to infinity of t x k with norm of xk less than one. All right, so which means that, which means that the ball is included in T B zero one and I take the closure. So of course it was here uh, a C divided by a node. And so uh, with all clause of general ED, you can rewrite, we can rewrite uh, Y and C uh, that such that this holds. So what's R 
objective here is uh, so we want to obtain not y, we want a zero here, okay? So the next step uh, of the first part is to write, is to, is to replace, to, to bring this ball centered at, at y uh, to a ball centered at zero. So uh, we, we are going to do that now. So in order to, to bring back the, the thing to, to zero, what we are going to do is that, so we, we make this remark. So we have that Y, so the, the ball center at Y is in there. So Y is in there, obviously. Uh, but since T is linear, so do minus Y. Minus, minus Y also, because everything is linear. So if Y is in there, minus Y is, is in there too. I just put a minus in front and it works. Okay, so next, what do you remark? You remark that you can write, you can write, so B zero C as minus Y plus B Y C. So that's the point. We are uh, going from, we have a ball uh, center at Y and we want the ball centered at zero so you write it like that and why why i write it like that because i know that all these things are included in tb01 plus tb01 okay because minus y belongs there and BYC belongs also there. And it's done because this is exactly T B two T B zero one. And uh, so so we got with uh, so we got what we want. So um let's just prove that these two things are equal. So uh, let, let, let's finish the let's finish the the proofs of of the first part. 
so I claim that um, that these two things are equal. So in fact, for the purpose of the proof, I would only need um, one one half of the inclusion, right? But uh, okay, we'll, we 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 are going to put the equality. So first, if y if y is in there, then I can write it as as this limit for some sequence x k, which is in the unit ball. All right, but then you have that this is equal to. So bilinearity is t to x k, so it's t of x k plus x k, so it's t of x k plus t of x k, uh, which means that, which means that, we have proved that, uh, which means that two t b zero one is included in t b zero one plus t b zero one. Uh, on the other hand, on the other hand, if y, if y is limit of some t x k plus t zk zk with xk and zk in the ball i can write it as limit as k goes to infinity of t xk plus zk by linearity okay and divided by two and i put two here and that's it because then uh, we just proved that t b zero one plus t b zero one is included in t b zero one. Okay, so now if I come back here, uh, I have that, so I can put the two in there. So I obtain finally, we have that B zero divided by C two. So this is the ball in F is included in T B zero one and the closure. So this ends the first part. So uh, now there, there exists, so we proved that there exists a constant C1 such that B0 C1 in F is included in uh, the closure of the image, image of the unit ball. So now we are going uh, to prove the two. So I can, I want to get rid of the closure. So, okay. So let's, Okay, so let's y in the ball center, so center at zero and of radius C1 divided by four is the same C1 uh, that in the first part. Okay, then, then, then four y, four y belongs to b zero c one, right? And so from from the first part, 
we get that there exists some x. Well, let's. So from the first part, there exists x in b zero one such that for y minus t x is less than c one divided by two. Okay, this comes from the definition of the closure. So I can get, I can choose here any any epsilon here as small as I want. This is the definition of the closure. Okay, so but I choose particularly epsilon equals c one divided by two. And I I set we set. we said x node equals x divided by four. So I'm going to, to consider a sequence, a sequence which will converge uh, to, that, to what I want. Okay, now what do I have? So x nodes is less than one divided by four and on the other hand y minus tx node you know uh here i divided by four and i get y minus t divided by t applied to x divided by four is less than c1 divided by eight Okay, so now I will apply the same thing, but replace y here by y minus t x node. So, okay, let's do that. So if I take eight times this, it's again in the ball center, at, uh, it's, it's in the ball zero C one. So I can get that. I apply the same. Such that, so it's of course it's not the same X, it's another X. So this here is, is in the ball. So by by so now I apply the result of the first part. So minus t x, and here I choose my epsilon to be c one divided by two. Again, and so we set. X one equals X divided by eight. So I will I will uh, iterate this process. So now I have X one which is less than one divided by eight, and Y minus T X node minus T X one, which is less than C one divided by sixteen. So uh, just grab the, the idea and you have to read it, read the proof again. Uh, I will make, make it uh, available. So by induction, we construct, by induction, we construct a sequence Xn such that, so 
the norm of Xn is less than one divided by two n plus two. And also together with y minus the sum from k equals zero to n of Txk is less than C1 divided by two n plus three. Okay, so this means what? This means that the sum, this is a Cauchy sequence. in the Banach space E, so it converges. To some X in E. And we have that norm of x is less than sum of k from zero on to plus infinity of norm of xk and you can check that this is equal to one k times which is one divided by two all right and on the other hand you have that since t is continuous, and that's the, the where we use the fact that t is continuous, we will get that t of the lim, lim, limit, which is x, it, it is equal to of t of xk and t of xk, if I go back here, so so the so this means that as k goes to as n goes to infinity sum of t sum of this is this means that sum from k to 0 to infinity of t x k equals y so this is y okay we just proved that y equals t of x and we have that the uh, y. So at the beginning, we should we shows y uh, such that so y our y was uh, in the ball. Let me get uh, y was in the ball here, and finally we we get x t of x equals y with norm of x is less than y divided by two. So we're good. So we, we prove that, we prove that the t, prove that the ball of zero C14 is included in the T of four. So I can get that. All right, so and that's it. <laughs>